We're going to start the long and short stitch lessons here on needle and thread with a little tutorial on starting your threads. And you can see that I started on the front with a knot in the thread and the knot is sitting on the front and I'm just taking three tiny little stitches into each other there and that will anchor my thread. So they just have to be little tiny stitches over one or two threads of your fabric. You can stitch kind of into the previous stitches and then you're just going to pull up on the tail of your knot, lift that off the fabric and snip it. Now I, I split stitched across the top of the box so you'll want to do that. And now I'm drawing in some vertical lines to remind me about the direction of my stitches. For the basic long and short stitch in this first little element, we're just going to be doing vertical stitches. So once your, your directional lines are drawn in, you're going to bring your needle to the front of your fabric inside the box and you're stitching over the top of the split stitch line. And I like to divide and conquer when I'm doing long and short stitch. So I'm actually going to mark off a few sections with what I call directional stitches. Then I'll go back and fill in between these stitches and then that way I always have my direction marked off. It's not really necessary so much when you're stitching vertically, but especially when you're working on a diagonal, it's good to have these, or on any kind of angle, it's good to have these directional stitches in first. So I've stitched in some directional stitches and now I'm going to go back and fill in between them. Now with long and short stitch, with this first row of stitches, I like to vary the length of my stitches so they're not all uniformly long and short all the same length. Some of my short stitches will be a little bit shorter than others or a little bit longer and same with the long stitches. And the idea is just to, to fill in. The whole point of long and short stitch really is natural shading and I think that varying the length of your long and short stitches helps to achieve that a little bit better. So you don't have to keep those perfectly uniform. At the same time, you don't want too many short stitches right next to each other, too many long stitches right next to each other. Just try to vary them as you work across the line. Notice that I went back to the middle and I'm working to the right. When I finish this section, I'm going to move back to the middle and work to the left. For your stitch spacing, think of it a lot like satin stitch. You want your stitches to lay parallel to each other. You don't want to crowd them so much that they overlap, but at the same time, you don't want spaces between them where you can see the fabric. All right, so you just want them to lie next to each other and to be nice and smooth. So we're going to work all the way to the right side, coming up inside the box and going over the split stitch line, filling in all the spaces. If your thread is too short here, you can end it and start a new thread, or you can just move back to the middle and start working to the left. Now on the left side, notice I didn't put in the directional stitches. They're not 100% necessary, especially when you're working vertically like this. All right. You're going to work from the middle now to the, to the left side of the box and varying the length of your stitches like you did before, spacing them correctly. If you're working on muslin, especially if it's a good, you know, a good quality muslin or cotton or even a high count linen, your, the weave of the fabric can help you space your stitches. I always find that with uh, the muslin that I use, which is usually Southern Belle, it's a high count good quality muslin, that I can um, stitch over one thread on the muslin 
and that will give me just the right spacing. And it's working out well here on this cotton as well. There are a couple methods to long and short stitch. Some some books will tell you that the first in the first row of long and short stitch, you don't need to to vary the length of your stitches. It can just be a straight satin stitch. Some methods will say to use two threads, two strands of floss to give you a thick foundation. You can do both of those um, if you wish. I'm using one thread and I am varying the length of my stitches. So I made it over to the left hand side and now I'm going to anchor my thread again by taking three little stitches into each other just like I began and I'm going to bring my needle up pull on the thread and snip it and that is your first row of long and short stitch.